Welcome, everyone. I am Zach Jones from Vertical Measures, and I'm your host for another installment of VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled How Brands Can Increase Engagement with Micro-Influencers and will be hosted or presented by Shane Barker. Shane's a digital marketing consultant that specializes in sales funnels, targeted traffic, and website conversions. He's consulted with Fortune 500 companies, influencers with digital products, and a number of A-list celebrities. Uh, but before we get started and I hand over the presentation, I just have a few things of note. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for taking some time out of your day, even though today is uh, Star Wars, The Last Jedi movie. I know it's going to be tough for, to focus for some of you. But in all seriousness, today's webinar, both the slides and the recording, will be available tomorrow. We'll send out an email to all the registrants, and if you'd like to view any of our previous webinars, they are all available at verticalmeasures.com slash webinars. If you have any questions at any point during this webinar, uh, use your questions tab on your webinar interface or tweet at us with the hashtag VMWebinar, and uh, we'll answer those during the Q&A session at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand off the presentation to Shane. Sorry, Shane, one second. There you go, Shane. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. Say hey, thanks for the introduction, there, Zach. And I, you know, it's kind of interesting. I didn't realize that we're only competing against the largest franchise movie of all time. So no pressure there. So once again, I do appreciate, you know, as Zach touched on, uh, everybody being here for the presentation today. So um, we're going to talk about, obviously, we're going to talk about, you know, engagement and influencer marketing and how it can be beneficial to your brands. Let me get this thing. Let me screw this thing over real quick. Um, I want to give you guys a little background into myself, and Zach did a, a good job of kind of a, a doing an introduction of, of what I've done. Uh, but I've worked with quite a few influencers online. Instagram has been the main place where we've had uh, huge successes. I jumped into it about six years ago, had a client by the name of Zoe Rodriguez that reached out to me um, about increasing um, some sales, and she wanted us to help with, at that time, it was just social media. She said, hey, I just need to help with some profiles and stuff. Well, it turned into a really long-term relationship. We ended up redoing everything for her. She was doing about half a million in sales and we got her up to about 1.6 million in sales. And so um, the way that we were able to do that obviously is her as a brand, she was a brand and an influencer. So what we did is we went after influencers or micro influencers and we had them talk about her products and we had a number of different ways that we did that to once again, to make sure that her audience was engaged. So that's kind of the premise of, of you know, how I jumped into the industry and, and it's been, like I said, six years now. When I was involved six years ago, it wasn't called influencer marketing. It was just posting stuff through social media and driving that traffic and converting it. So, um, once again, so let's jump into this. So today we're going to be talking about how brands can uh, increase engagement with micro-influencers. Once again, I appreciate Zach and, and the, the group over Vertical Measures for reaching out to me. I've always been a big fan. And when they asked me to be in a webinar, I was uh, extremely excited about it, especially when, talk, when we're talking about influencer marketing and micro-influencers. So let's see what we got. So, all right, let me, all right. So, you know, one of the biggest questions is, is why is it so difficult for brands to get engaged in it, right? Because that's obviously what you want. When you get those messages out, you want people to engage with your content, right? So the three main reasons that I see are customers get distracted or overloaded, right? There's so much information out there. There's so much content. There's so much things that's being put out there. Like, how do you get a, a info or how do you get a, um, a potential customer to focus, right? It's extremely difficult to do. How do you get their attention? Um, another reason why that is is mainly because your maybe your content sucks, right? Uh, maybe that's a little too forward. But if you don't have great content, I mean, you're you're competing against other companies that have great content. You know, once again, you have to. It, content's going to be one of those things we're going to touch on a little later, but it's extremely important to have epic content. Um, and then the thing is, you don't respond on social media. I mean, this seems really basic in nature of the fact that you know, if if I'm in a store and I open a store and that somebody walks into my store and says, "Hey, I was wondering how much do you want for that blue widget?" and I just stare at them and I don't give them an answer, there's a problem with that, right? You usually say, oh, the blue widget's, you know, $17.95, and if you buy two of them, you get 20% off. It's the same thing through social media. Like, driving engagement means you need to have those conversations, whether it's good or bad, right? So you want to make sure that you're engaging through um, social media if people are asking questions or reaching out to people that are, are, are specifically writing things up there that might have something to do with your brand or another brand, and you know, there's always a good opportunity to be able to, to continue those conversations there. So how can brands overcome these challenges? Well, it's pretty simple as you create unique, engaging, and actionable content, right? It really comes down to the type of content you're putting out there. If you're putting out great content, people are going to praise it and they're going to share it. They're going to engage with it. If you're putting out content that's not engageable and doesn't seem that interesting, and I mean, it's pretty, pretty it's common sense that people aren't going to react to that. <clears throat> so commonly used engagement strategies. So some of the stuff that we've used with our clients in the past is 
offering free trials or freebies or discounts, um, working with celebrities to, to put a human face behind their brand. Now, celebrities, there's, there's levels to this, right? Celebrities are the top. We have mega influencers. We have uh, regular influencers and we have micro influencers. So I'll kind of explain that as we go. There's obviously different pricing with it. There's different engagement levels and we'll go through that here in the webinar as well. Sending emails, you know, time of the latest offers and special deals, um, hosting giveaways, contests, or launching sweepstakes, and then obviously banner ads that display your offers um, or your deals on your actual website to engage. But the reality of this whole thing is that there's no guarantee that customers will sign up for your free trial. Your celebrity endorsements are probably going to be expensive and a little risky. You know, you're putting a lot of eggs in, in one basket and it's a, you know, you're giving somebody X amount of dollars for them to put the message out. Either it goes awesome and you get tons of sales or it goes falls flat and you hate influencer marketing and you assume that it's a sham and none of it works, right? So um, some of the other things are some email recipients may not be interested in opening your email, right? What's your open rate and do you have an engaged audience there? If you send out an email once a year, you're probably not going to have too many people that open that because they've forgotten about you. Um, you may be unable to, to, you know, to, to build a huge social media following. So sometimes that obviously it takes a while. Um, some customers may not be interested in reading your blog post, right? So that's another downside. Um, finding the right uh, uh, audience for your contest or giveaway can always be challenging, right? If you can have this most epic contest, but the issue is, is if you're not finding the right audience of people that want actually whatever you're selling or whatever you're giving away, then there's a disconnect, right? Um, people have started to ignore banners and had ad blockers now. So that's a big thing if, you know, you're, you're doing these ads and you've seen a lot of the bigger, um, you know, Mashable just sold for, I think, $50 million when it was evaluated a few hundred million a few years ago. You know, they're having problems with ad space because people are putting up ad blockers, which that blocks, you know, certain types of uh, people and, and certain types of advertisers. So there's not as much money in it there. So the ultimate solution to all these crazy problems, micro-influencers. So this is where we've seen huge successes. You know, once again, we work with a lot of celebrities and stuff like that. Seeing some good success there depends on the product, their audience, that kind of thing. But micro-influencers is where um, it's economical and where it makes sense to where you can get the most engagement for your brand. And I'll explain that as we go through here. So what are micro-influencers? Like, what do we, how do we define these? So social media users, anywhere between 1,000 to 100,000 followers. Now, these numbers can change. Really, the idea of it is that they have somewhat of a smaller following. What I mean by that, let's say under 100,000. I mean, I, I've seen micro-influencers that only have 500 followers, but those are maybe hyper, like hyper-targeted followers. Like it could be a, a yoga studio in, in LA, and those are 500 people that are local in the area that are all yogis that are, once again, anything that this person, that Jennifer posts up, and they all follow it, right? And that's 500 engaged people. I mean, that's extremely, extremely valuable. Um, they specialize in a certain niche, right? So they're, I mean, that's one of the things we want to take a look at when finding the right influencer, which once again, I'll, I'll touch on that here later on in the webinar. That the idea is, is you want to make sure that it's a good fit for your brand. And these micro-influencers, um, there's some, they're, they're very genuine. And so what we look, when we look at these micro-influencers, we think, well, these are really everyday consumers, right? So Jennifer is the yogi and she says, this is, oh my God, this mat is extra fluffy or this is this or whatever it is, she's vouching for a product. Then somebody goes, well, I'm kind of like Jennifer and, you know, I would like to have a, you know, a fluffier mat or whatever that may be. And then so they go, okay, it's, it's more down to earth, right, than a, than a potential celebrity saying something. You're like, I don't know if that person really maybe does yoga, you know, but they're just kind of vouching for the product because they're getting paid to do that. So it's a little more genuine. So how can micro-influencers overcome these problems? Um, this is a thing, the ability to engage, right? So, like, that's kind of the biggest thing is, like, how do you engage these people? So the average engagement for influencers with um, fewer than uh, 2,000 followers is 10.7%. So... The idea of this is the more people that you have following, it's going to be harder to engage. And the analogy that I use here is, you know, if you have a restaurant and you have, you open the open sign and 10,000 people come in, it's going to be very hard to shake hands with everybody, engage with everybody, right? So 10,000 people is a lot of people to come in. They're going to be there for an hour. It's a lunch rush, whatever. But what happens if you only had 30 people that came in or, or 40 people? Then you, you do have an opportunity to go around and ask everybody's meal is and you shake hands, what I call shaking hands and kissing babies there's more of that opportunity. So I'm trying to make it a real world example of, you know, how you can see that if you have a hundred thousand or 200,000 followers, like this example here, we got a hundred thousand to 150,000 followers. The engagement rate goes down to 2.5. Now this is on average, different products get people to engage more. I mean, there's, once again, these are averages, but this is what we've seen. So, and then if you have over a million followers, once again, you get the engagement is right around 1.5. 
Um, and, and that's kind of the deal, once again. The idea being there's more people there, you have more voices, more people writing comments. It's gonna be very difficult for you to respond to everybody, right? That engagement is extremely difficult. You could spend all day doing that. So we start to see the, the eyeballs and the engagement on those profiles um, seem to be lower. So the ability to remain authentic and relatable, right? So micro influencers are like everyday consumers, they're relatable, they're not like a mega influencer. I kind of touched on that a little earlier. Um, they know the type of content and tone that resonates with their audience. It's extremely important. Um, you know, you got to make sure that if it's a product, it's got to resonate with their audience. If, if not, if you're talking about, once again, it's a motorcycle club and you're talking about yoga mats, there's a disconnect there, right? That doesn't make any sense to do that. Um, that's a pretty self, should be self-explanatory, but I've seen some examples of people just going after somebody that has a very large following and, and hoping that, you know, that once again, it's going to be a good fit. Back in the day, and I, you know, it's going to sound like the old influencer marketing game. Back in the day, you know, when I was, you know, walking up the, the hill, you know, snowing out on both sides of the hill, I was walking anyways. But the point being of, of, of that is, you know, the back in the day, we didn't have software. We didn't have a lot of software and we didn't have a lot of analytics to be able to look at that. But I literally used Excel spreadsheets um, and we were kind of hoping we can kind of look at some of the comments and kind of assume what the, the demographic was. Now there's tons of software and I'm actually going to go into my recommendations of softwares that I personally use for my programs and for my, uh, for my clients in the campaigns. Um, they can use their knowledge to creatively position products in the best way possible. So they know their audience. They know what kind of content their audience likes. So give them that creative control. Micro influencers um, have fewer brand partnerships. So there's not quite as, as much competition. You go after a mega influencer, and unless they just absolutely love your product, it, it, it can become a numbers game. So if I say, hey, I'll give you a thousand bucks to, to, you know, to try my product and to write a review, an authentic review about my product, the problem is, is the guy that offers them $1,101 is probably going to get that, right? Because I know it's only a dollar more, but let's say, you know, we're talking thousands of dollars, a thousand between 2000, the person that offers $2,000 is probably going to get their attention more. So it's a numbers game. There's not really a, a lot of authenticity there. It's a, how much money can I make off the profile, which is, this is where when you're vetting micro influencers, even influencers, make sure you have that vetting process. If you feel like it's all about money, uh, I wouldn't work with them. Um, so they only promote products that they truly like. Now this is important. I'm not saying all micro influencers do that, but they should, right? It should be a product that they can vouch for and say, hey, this fits my demographic. Because it also, if they're promoting products that don't fit their demographic, then they're going to lose followers as well. I mean, it's detrimental on both sides. So make sure there's a good fit there. Um, and this makes it easier for uh, whichever brands they promote to win the audience's trust, right? The idea is, is you want to present something that you personally use, keep it authentic, and then, you know, your audience will, will feel that in, in the promotions that you do. So finding and connecting with the right influencers, this is always the question of the day, right? I mean, it's no different than if you're doing, you know, PPC, you're doing any of this kind of stuff. You can do pay per click, but the problem is, is are you finding the right audience, right? So when we drill down, if you find that right audience and you get your converting sales and great for every dollar you're making, $2, life's good. It's the same thing with it. influencer marketing is no different. Most of the, the clients that come to me, they go, we've tried influencer marketing and it just doesn't work. And they say, okay, well, let me take a look at your campaign, right? Because there's probably something that was done wrong. It's either A, you're working with the wrong influencers, your guys' messaging wasn't right, um, the content wasn't good, whatever that is, right, and we have to evaluate that. I mean, it's the same thing, when, you know, when I used to do a lot of SEO, people go, oh, I worked with an SEO company, and I, I just never had any success. Well, the problem is, is they might not have, they may have been you know, telling you you were going to get this, and, you, you know, it wasn't realistic. There's certain things that we look at. For the influencer campaigns, most people that I, I can say, listen, hey, this is the proper expectation. This is what you guys should be looking for. This is the reason why you guys failed on the last one. Let me show you how to, to revamp that for the new one. So once again, find the right influencers. Once again, would seem like common knowledge. You think, obviously, you want to find the right people. But there's great, great tools out there today that you can find out people's demographics. Um, that's great for brick-and-mortar type businesses. You can do searches through local locations, whether it be zip codes or area codes. Um, uh, anyway, some really awesome tools out there. So defining your ideal uh, micro-influencers, like what characteristics do, uh, does a perfect micro-influencer have for you? So these are questions you have to ask internally. Like what, what niche does, um, do these micro-influencers specialize in? So once again, if you're a yoga mat, then you obviously want to find the yogis. Does it matter? Are you shipping worldwide? Can you just ship nationwide? Um, and what are you looking for? You know, you're looking to build like an ambassador program or you're just looking to drive some sales. I mean, you're going to have to figure that stuff out. How many followers do they have? No. Follower count is not the number one thing. I've seen plenty of people that have a million followers that we've done a campaign with, and it hasn't you know, driven the results that we were looking to do. Followers are important, but really what we look at is engagement. And so I look at comments, which is another scary thing. Anybody can buy likes if they want to, right? And there's nothing weird about that. 
even with the comments thing, make sure you read the comments and make sure they're genuine comments, not, you know, there's these, there's certain ways to get more comments on your profile and, you know, there's someone go into that heavy detail. But the idea is, is make sure you look, when you read those comments, that it seems like you know, potential clients or people that are engaged with the content, not just writing, hey, cool stuff, or great, or an emoji, or something like that. You want people that are engaging, because um, once again, all that stuff can be faked, and you know, so it's important to take a look at that. And I look at multiple posts, look at 10 posts they did before that with products or their own, and take a look at the comments. It's really important to do that. And then what kind of voice do they use to connect with their audience? Um, that's gonna be another thing, is it's, you know, if they're negative in, in what they write, or if they're, you know, maybe talking about politics all the time, and that's not something that, that you want your product to be associated with, do that research ahead of time and review them online. Look them up. I mean, we have this beautiful thing called Google where you can find out anything about anybody. Do that research. Um, find out other, there's a lot of the software that I use. I can find out um, who these people have worked with in the past, other brands that they've worked with. So we can go and take a look at that. If I, you know, I'm working with Nike and this guy's been working with Adidas for three years and they just dropped his contract, is it a good time for us to come take over, right? Or do, are all of his people sneakerheads that love Adidas and it doesn't make sense for Nike to come on with them? So those are all things we have to take a look at. Um, and do their, uh, their, their aesthetics appeal to you, right? So once again, how they do their content, does it make a good, uh, good fit for your brand? And then how many brands do they work with, right? Th this is an issue. If you have somebody that, you know, they do three posts a day and every single post is about selling something, they're selling teeth whitening and they're selling, you know, the fit tea and they're selling this and they're selling shoes and doing this, at what point do it's, at that point, obviously this person is just trying to make as much money as possible with their profile and it's not genuine. Right, and there's obviously something else going on here. It's all about the money. You don't want that. And I think it's the frequency of posts. Are they posting once a week? Are they posting once a month? Like, what do we got there? And once again, what kind of content are they putting out there? Is it good content? Um, does it seem like it's uh, um, authentic? I mean, that authenticity is a huge, huge thing with this. So number two, conduct a micro-influencer um, search. So here's some of the options that I, I mean, currently I use Grin, which I um, highly recommend to their Awesome when it comes to finding they have their own database that they scrub and they bring in. It's not just a straight database, but from finding micro influencers through social networks like Instagram and stuff, that's mainly where I work in the space. We do a little bit of Snapchat, but mainly in Instagram. Um, and then you can once again you can find those people on engagement rates and locations, and you just got to figure out what parameters make sense for your uh, you know, for your campaign. Influencer.co uh, co is a, another way you can go in there, and they have campaigns that they run in there that, you know, if you're a brand or an influencer, you can see who's running the campaign and, and bid on them, and they'll send you an emails and what's going on. Um, Autolytica is another great one there, uh, based out of the UK. Once again, great information, a lot of information that you look for categories of demographic or, you know, the content creating, all that kind of stuff. And then Hyper, uh, Gill, and those guys over there have always done a phenomenal job, one of the um, original companies that, that have been around. But... Um, they've got some great information as well, and, and, and like I said, I would take a look at any one of those. Just depends. Each one of them is a little different, so um, I do some reviews of them as well. But just you know, take a look at that and, and just make sure it's a good fit for for your brand. So how do you filter the results? I mean, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Each one of the the uh, platforms have different ways of doing this, but one of the simplest ways is do a keyword or a hashtag. Uh, search to find the relevant micro influencers. So once again, if I'm doing yoga, if I'm doing yoga LA, then hashtag yoga um, LA or Los Angeles. There's ways to be able to drill down and start to look at these people. Those things can be done for free or it can be done through the platforms as well. Um, and then compare the characteristics with other micro influencers. So what I do, there's a way, I actually offer something on my site where I look at influencers for free. Um, most companies will come to me and say, hey, Shane, help me find the right influencers. And since that big of a deal, like how do I find those people? So we'll help them with those campaigns and help them find that perfect influencer. Um, and once again, we'll, you know, whatever, we'll look at 200 people, we'll break it, down, break it down to 20 people, and then the client can actually review them and we'll kind of go through the demographics and why we think they're a good fit. And you know, there's a, a whole process that we do that we want to vet these influencers and make sure that it makes sense for your brand. So step four, so check out um, or reach out to micro-influencers. So this is a big thing. You have to realize micro influencers don't get pitched as much as we have the you know celebrities and mega influencers and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's important with the pitch. You don't beat around the bush. Don't be secretive. Don't be you know. Let them know what you want. It doesn't need to be too formal, right? I mean, the idea is you're trying to engage somebody, but do the research. Look into them. Understand what they've got. Hey, John, you know, I have some templates that we'll go through here in a second. But the idea is to just be engaging. Understand that. Go and look at their profiles. Get to know who they are because that's important. Just send a blanket email, you know, you send a templated email to 500 people and you don't customize it, 
I mean, your, your open rate or your the amount of people are going to want to engage is going to be low. And usually it's just the people that are looking for money. You want somebody to say, listen, I do, I have a templated email, but you want to customize it and say, listen, I spent some time understanding who you are as a person, what kind of brands are good for you. Let me tell you why I think my brand's a good fit for you and go into that. So number two point, be direct and clearly mention why you're reaching out to them. Be, be clear on what you want to do. And then we have the uh, and templates that I'll go over here in the next slide that you guys can use as a reference. Once again, please, don't just take these templates and go and send it out to 500 people. Um, spend a little bit of time, break it down, and, and, and you know, once again, show these people that you spend a little time, you spend a little time in your day, and you reach out to them, the reason why they're that perfect influencer for your brand. So here we go, you know, XYZ at Gmail. Hey, I think, I think you're, uh, you'll love this new product, right? Hey, John. Hey, how's it going? I'm working closely. Um, I've been following you closely on Instagram. I absolutely love your content. You know, my name is Jada Da. This is my company, and here's why I'm reaching out to you. We've come up with a new line of products called blah 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 blah, designed to this, this, that, and the other. And after seeing the kind of work that you do and the content you create, we've decided that you'd be a perfect test drive to, to a perfect fit to test drive the product. Um, it'd be a huge honor if you would share your opinion with us. Blah blah blah. If you're interested, please, you know, once again, we can discuss this further. That's a template. Really, what we want to do is we want to go in and, and customize it. Like, hey, um, you know, XYZ influencer, micro influencer. You know, we see that you had a baby three weeks ago. Congratulations on that. I also see you're a big Cubs fan. I'm also a huge Cubs fan. Right now, it's personalized. Now you're showing somebody that you've spent some time looking at their profile. This isn't just a blanket, you know, email that gets sent out. And it's a little more time consuming, but you're going to be able to build rapport a lot stronger with that. Um, here goes another one once again. Hey, you know, interested in a new campaign? Question mark. Hey, you know, name. Great work on the recent blog post you did. I, I, um, I expected nothing less from you. My name is Shane. I represent this company. I've been following your work for a while, and I'm a huge fan. That's why I'm reaching out to you. My team and I collabor uh, collaboration with some of your favorite content creators in the yoga niche to promote our XYZ product. It's a product that did the value proposition, and I think it would be perfect for the campaign. Then explain why they'd be perfect. We know that you've been doing yoga for about eight years. You're very influential in the Los Angeles area. Um, we know that you just got married six months ago. Congratulations. And we know that you opened your yoga studio up about two years ago. Um, and once again, congratulations and all that. I mean, they people post everything on their Instagram, right? And they put everything, they put lifeline, like, like there are things that have happened in their life on their Instagram. It doesn't take that much to go through there and get a good idea of this person, of how they work, things that have happened in their life, and then put them in these, these, these pitching notes. So how to use micro-influencers to drive engagement, right? And that's the whole point of this. Um, number one, have them share authentic reviews. Um, you know, give them that, that capability. Tell them this is the product. Don't sway them with, you know, don't tell them, hey, you have to say this, you have to say that. If you have a good product, you shouldn't be worried about that. Um, and then, you know, once again, have them do an authentic review. So have the influencers give their opinion about your product or service. Um, they can talk about the pros and the cons of the product, right? I mean, you want it to be, you know, if they, if they don't love the product, then I guess that's one thing. But if you have a solid product, uh, you want them to say, hey, listen, if they're a great micro-influencer, a great influencer, then they should review things, and people that will follow them are looking for a genuine review. Um, and so if every product, they go, oh, my God, this is the best product ever, and they do that 20 times in a row, then people start to go, ah, I don't know if the reviews that they're doing are authentic. If you go, hey, this is a great mat. I love this mat. It is squishier than most. The only thing was is I noticed when I got really, really sweaty at the end of my workout or whatever, <laughs> I seemed to slip. Not a big deal because most of these mats that happens, but it was just something to think about. Not a big deal. Those are the pros and cons. You want to look at both sides of this. Um, and then they also could talk about your favorite features. I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt to educate them. Like, here goes this. This is the reason why we created this mat. This was the issue that we've had with other mats. This is how ours is different. You know, it's important to share those things with them so they understand what are the benefits over yours over the other product, but don't force them to say things that, that aren't going to be genuine in the reviews. <clears throat> so an example of a micro-influencer giving an honest review. First impression, no sense, lighter texture. I'm not going to go into this whole thing. You can kind of see it there, but that's, a, that's being authentic, right? But here we go. I woke up to my lips still feeling a bit dry. I'm going to continue using it, but so far I'm not feeling it. Okay, that's a very authentic review, right? So that's going to be one of those situations that you're like, hey, you know, maybe this is something you need to look at from a product perspective. Not all of them will be good reviews, but the ones that you do get that are good reviews, obviously it's going to help push that. Um, and then number two, so have them promote um, giveaway contests. So, you know, sharing free product, discount, gift cards um, with micro-influencers. There's a lot of really cool ways to do this, to do the different contests and campaigns. It can be discounts. It can be, you know, they can put in, you know, Jennifer 20%, whatever that is. 
um, to be able to get a discount or it can be a free giveaway. There's some really cool stuff that can happen there. Um, I know with a lot of them, like fitness employee people that I work with, they'll do, you know, hey, here goes some creatine, here goes a shirt, here goes, you know, what, two hours of, you know, free workout time that I'll, you know, I'll, you know train you, whatever that is, putting a good, you know, good package together for you. And then have them talk about your brand new product, obviously, and what they liked about it, what they didn't like. Um, you can also do a sweepstakes or a giveaway, kind of what we touched on a little bit, and they can share their news with their followers, obviously. So example of a micro-influencer hosting a giveaway contest with a brand, great, put in a giveaway, who says yes to good health? One of the biggest tips for staying on track is to always have healthy snacks on hand for your um, hanger strikes, right? And there goes the bar. So anyways, you kind of see this, and so it goes into this whole thing of like the campaign, what they're gonna be doing, what the giveaway is all about, what it includes, um, and you know, obviously where they like the product, and then you, you, know, and you can go down further, they can enter to win, blah, blah, blah. So that's another good way because everybody loves a good giveaway. If, you know, if, if um, Daisy Beat loves this product, and she's now I'm actually, she talked about it a few days before that, now she's actually doing a campaign, and people have an opportunity to try the product for free, that's awesome. So anyways, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to go about things. Option three, so have them demonstrate your product's value. So have micro-influencers create content. They'll educate their followers about the product. Um, they can you know, create tutorial videos or blog posts to demonstrate how the product works. And then make sure they highlight the product's best features and, and showcase the product in context. So um, once again, give them the option to, to share what they want, but educate them along the way of, of why your product you know, can be better than the other products that are out there. Um, most of the time, if they like the product, they're going to go ahead and bring that kind of stuff up. If your product's terrible, you know, I'd be a little cautious of asking people to, to give authentic reviews because it could end not well. Um, here goes one that uh, was kind of interesting. So which this is uh, Power Lunch Bowls with a Green Goddess Dressing. So this is a blogger, Sarah. <clears throat> and so she had, um, there's a, a company called Tayo, and this is Spacho Verde. So it's a chilled soup. So you'll see here, she actually took a picture, and I believe this is... I don't know, some type of a rice, but it looks like she actually put the gazpacho on the rice in that, so it's a great visual, right? Um, and I don't know if this was a, a paid sponsor type deal or if this was something she just really likes, uh, teal, I call it tired but teal, um, gazpacho. So um, anyways, great visual. You can, sign, you can see the product here. You have a good visual of the actual, what the product looks like and then actually what it looks like in the bowl and then actually on, on the, in the bowl or in the bowl and in the bowl huh? as soup. So interesting, interesting how she did that. Uh, option four, so have micro-influencers take over your social media. So um, we've all seen this where they have, you know, what we call takeovers. So let the micro-influencer use your social media account for the day. That can you know, be Snapchat. That can be Instagram. Um, I haven't seen it's a little bit on Facebook, but mainly Instagram. That's probably what we've done most of ours. Have them share the news of the takeover. So the idea is, is to build up to this, right? No different than we did with this webinar. Um, you know, if we just took over, if I just did this webinar starting today and didn't need promotions, we're not going to have that many people on there. The idea is, is you want to, you know, you want to have this influencer say, hey, I'm looking to, uh, forward to taking over Lululemon's, you know, Instagram profile on, you know, December 27th. Everybody come out and take a look. And then, you know, you want to get that. Because the idea is, is, is to cross market, right? The idea is that when I take over Lululemon, that some of my people are going to be there to listen and the people from Lululemon are going to like what I'm presenting there and they're going to come over and follow my profile. So um, that's a good way to go about things. Um, they could create content around certain themes that fit their brand and campaigns and product. It's been pretty self-explanatory. Here goes a good example of a micro-influencer taking over a brand or organization. So this was the uh, Wild Atlantic way. Um, it's out of this world, at the edge of the world, my favorite place in all the world, hello Instagram. Um, my name is Valerie. And so anyways, it goes in, so she puts her thing in there so people from this profile can go follow her on Instagram. And this is my, you know, uh, Wild Atlantic way and then you know anyway so she goes into this whole thing of you know how she's taken over this profile and the reason why she likes it and then once again she'll talk about it all day long on different things that she's done places she's visited um, obviously it'll tie into what this brand puts out or what this company does um, and once again you'll see some of the hashtags that we got there in some mood and all the other fun stuff so option five have them share an experience so you know invite influencers to to maybe do an in-store event uh, brand events, free product samplings, etc. A lot of different ways to do this. Um, have them share videos, images, stories, etc. of their experience with the product. I mean, there's Facebook Live, there's stories on Instagram, obviously Snapchat has that as well. There's a number of different ways to create epic content for your brand. You just gotta figure out uh, what's gonna be, what makes the most sense with the influencer. And I think when you have that creative uh, juices start flowing is when you let the influencer, once again, they know their audience, you wanna have them have creative control you still want to approve it and make sure that it fits with your, your brand and the image and everything, 
but you want to make sure that you give them those, give them the reins to be able to come up with some different examples of content, and so you guys can review those. Um, and then encourage them once again to remain honest about your experience. Um, I think that's really important. If you're working with somebody that is going to to be paid to to say whatever they need to say, the problem is the audience understands that and says, "Hey, John's never given a bad review." And, but he's always seen, you know, he's always ready to collect some money, but not necessarily give an honest review. And honest reviews are extremely important. So an example of a micro influencer sharing an experience. So obviously great visual, right? We've got, you know, we see somebody else having a great dinner, a great lunch, um, and this is, you know, following Mother Nature's lead. We have uh, sweet greens, strawberry fields, salad plus summer solstice equals lovely local, right? So and then hashtag SP, which is another thing for sponsored ads. Make sure that if you're doing any kind of a thing with an influencer, they put on hashtag SP or sponsored, hashtag sponsored. Um, you, you know, you, you have to make sure that people know that, that you're, that if you're being paid for something, you receive some kind of compensation for it, um, that you let people know that it's sponsored. Um, but anyways, great visual. You kind of see how it all ties into everything. Um, epic content there, and I think they had a, a good response from, uh, from Liz putting that content out. So what tools do you need, um, or what tools do you need for running micro-influencer campaigns? Uh, we already talked about Grin. Um, I think it's an excellent option. Influence.co is, is, is different than Grin. They, once again, they have more campaigns on there. Grin is where you're going to go if you want to find you know, these types of influencers and you can dig really deep. Um, Hyper is a great tool. Uh, Analytica, as we talked about. Plus, Sumo um, is mainly what I use that for is going to be if I'm looking for um, bloggers or I'm looking for somebody that... Um, I want them to write about on blogs, so not necessarily Instagram or Snapchat or anything like that, but more where I want to find out that something's writing, somebody's writing about a brand, maybe they've done a review of, of a competitor, and, and my client wants to get a review from them. So we can go and take a look at that. It has social shares and that kind of stuff on there as well, which is beneficial in seeing what kind of content um, got what kind of shares. So tools for you know managing records, same stuff. Google Drive, Evernote's always good. Slack, you know, for managing the team is kind of what we use. You can do the same like with Grin. We can you can manage the campaigns actually in the platform, which is helpful. Uh, but we sometimes have notes outside of that that you know, if you need to once again do an Excel spreadsheet of influencers we've contacted or, and prices we've offered them to kind of organize it. Um, these are the three platforms that I use. Um, and then for calculating ROI, Grin um, and you know, Tap Influence. And there's obviously some other ones out there. Um, so my final takeaways, guys. So you know one of the things, and these are going to be the Three points. I think if you know you look at this whole presentation, what I want you to like go. Okay, these are the things that, that I need to think about. Is it's critical that micro influencers continue to maintain their their natural and authentic voice. Don't try to deviate from that. Don't try to have them say whatever you want them to say. Um, there's a way to do it where it's authentic and it makes sense for you as a, a brand and, and them as an influencer. If the influencer is way off in the messaging they're trying to put out, then maybe it's not a good fit for you. And that's something you got to think about from the brand perspective. Um, and then never compel micro-influencers to say something positive about your product. If you have a great product, have confidence in your product. Um, and, you know, like I said, understand that creative process and understand that the reviews might not always be 100% glowing. Um, the idea is, is you want authentic reviews. And then always do your research before picking influencers. That's the biggest thing. I mean, if you're marketing, it could be the best product in the world, and it can be to one million people that are highly engaged. But if you're not promoting the right product, you need to find the right influencer to promote that product through. That's where the issues come because now it, there's just going to be a huge disconnect on both sides. All right, guys. So that was the webinar for today. I'm, I'm got Zach is going to jump on here in a second. But so my information, if you need to contact me, it's just shanebarker.com. Um, my actual my my email address is shane at shanebarker. Um, please get a hold of me on any of the social you know outlets, Twitter and Instagram, and Facebook, all that fun stuff. And I also have an influencer ebook where I go into a lot more detail. It actually, has the templates in there. There's a lot of content in there. Um, what's worked for us over the last, I think my ebook's on 50 pages or something. So it's a lot more detail. Just go to shanebarker.com forward slash influencer slash ebook. Or if you put an influencer ebook um, in Google, I think we're number one. Uh, but anyways, you can download the ebook for free. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me at any time. Hey, Shane, that was awesome. Uh, really great job. And uh, I like how your email is and your website are very simple, <laughs> very easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so let's dive into the first question we got here. Uh, why are market micro influencers better than mega influencers? Or I guess yeah, why are they better than mega mega influencers? Yeah, I think it really comes down to engagement. Um, you know, there's there's first of all there's a price factor. So I mean, when you're dealing with the bigger influencers, they're getting pitched all day long when it comes to products. So it's 
it's a little hard. They have a lot of gatekeepers. They have people that are, you know, hey, we want to be paid this to be able to do this. Um, it just becomes, it's a, it's, it's a more of a competitive space. With micro-influencers, you can have people, once again, that have, you know, say, 500 to 5,000, 10,000, that have a highly engaged audience um, that haven't been pitched, you know, where the, the micro-influencer hasn't pitched, you know, 50 products in the last three months. So they're going to be a lot more genuine, and they're going to be a lot more hungry to, to have some kind of a partnership. I mean, I tell people, like, if you're going to do this with influencers, develop a relationship. Don't just do, you know, just putting up one post isn't going to crush it. You're not going to see a million dollars in sales from one post. It's frequency. So if you have an influencer that does move the needle for you and you, know, you put up some content and they seem to have a great response, develop out an ambassador program, you know, talk with those people, figure out what you guys can do to work together to, to promote each other's business, right? And, and what you want to do is a long-term relationship because, you know, I tell people, you know, you open, I was trying to do like real world examples. I mean, just because you open your restaurant, you click the on sign and you put up a little thing that says, you know, open doesn't mean that you have a thousand people come running through that door, right? So what you have to do is you have to you know, build up that, that community. And by doing this, by doing multiple advertisements with, um, with the same influencers, now your people are starting to see that product over and over and over, you know, millennials and everybody these days, it's, we all have ADHD, right? So it's like, you got to see things over and over and over. They say what, like six or seven times before somebody reacts. Um, to something in just typical marketing influencer, there's a little, little faster response because they're, you know, it's a lifestyle, impressionable, and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, next question is from Virginia. Uh, do we ask influencers to reveal that they're getting a referral or kickback? So, yeah, I mean, legally, FTC, you have to put um, hashtag SP or hashtag sponsored. It's a little bit of some gray area with that. Um, you know, some influencers don't do it. Um, if you're a brand, uh, I would recommend that you follow that. You, you don't really want to get yourself into trouble there. I know that you know some people say, well, it takes away a little bit of the, you know, a little bit of the sizzle from what you're selling. Um, I think if it's done right, um, the, the idea is, is you definitely want to disclose that. But if done correctly and done with the right product and the right audience, I don't think people will. I think they'll appreciate the fact that you're being honest about that. Um, I don't think there's a huge, huge issue there. Okay. Next question is from Drex. How do you determine the right pricing to offer influencers? Most that we work with ask for the moon. What is a good way to determine how much these posts are worth? Man, that's the question of the day. That's a phenomenal question. You know, that's, it, it's, I call it the wild, wild west. And the reason why I call it that is because, you know, it, I can be a local influencer and have whatever, let's say, you know, 15,000 followers and you know, I have a local mom and pop, you know, Mexican restaurant that says, hey, we want to do some promotions with you for whatever reason. Great, hey, let's do it. And I'll say, hey, I'll charge you guys, you know, 500 bucks and we'll do 10 campaigns or whatever that number is, right? And then all of a sudden I get Walmart that knocks on my door. And do you think my pricing is different for Walmart than the local, you know, Mexican joint? Probably, right? So that's a problem is there's really no, uh, I mean, we're working on a tool right now to, to help people go to my website and be able to calculate that and be able to have an idea of kind of we look at engagement. It's an algorithm or an equation that we're putting together. Um, this is the thing is that you have to figure out what you think it's worth. Um, you know, in, in if it depends on what you're offering. If you're offering them like free product and that kind of stuff, if you feel like it's a fair deal, then there we go. And if you feel like they're the perfect influencer, and they're saying, but maybe they're saying, hey, listen, to to do one picture with us is going to be a thousand dollars, and that's not in your budget. Then what you have to figure out is, does it make sense to like negotiate something different? Like, hey, instead of one post for let's say a thousand dollars, would you be willing to do three for for fifteen hundred? And let me explain you know, how this is going to be beneficial for you because not only are we going to do this, we're going to do some paid ads so that other brands will see your face. And so we're going to do, let's do some cross promotions. Like how do we make this a win-win? Because what happens most of the time when you're pitching these influencers, all you're talking about is me, 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 right? When I get pitched, like when somebody says, hey, Shane, I want you to test my software, 99% of this stuff is about me, me, me. Like let me tell you about my software and how it's the best and this, that, and the other. Very few times I have people go, hey, Shane, like, I know you're real busy and, and, you know, could you take a look at our software and here's what we plan on doing. If you enjoy this software, then what we'll do is I'm going to put you on our homepage and, and put your review on the homepage. And that way you get some exposure, right? People get to see who you are. We'll make it clickable. It's a good backlink. Like, how can we make this a win-win? Most people don't talk about that. Most people come and they pitch with a handout. And when you have your handout, guess what happens? They're going to be looking for the person that's offering the most value money-wise or whatever that may be try to develop some type of relationship. This is a relationship given like a business where you want to, you want to have rapport with people and figure out what the win-win is. That's really important. Don't just, you know, have your hand out. Okay. Uh, let's do one more from Marissa. 
there are so many influencer marketing agencies out there now. Do you think they are worth the expense, or would you recommend investing in a platform and keeping the campaigns in house? That's a good question. So um, I, I do consulting, and I am an agency as well. So I think it really depends. Uh, um, the key is, is there's ways to, you know, if you're looking at uh, to cut down the cost of what it costs for an agency, because agencies can be anywhere from, you know, a thousand to a million dollars, right? It just depends on, on what you're what you're pitching, what you're putting out there. Um, I think there's obviously some value in agencies, uh, but that's not to say that you can't um, go and figure this out. I mean, there's I write about it all day long, and I write about what works for my clients. So I give out a lot of good information of like, hey, if you want to do this campaign on your on your own, so there's there's levels. Hey, if you've got a great budget and you want somebody to crush it for you, there's great agencies. Obviously, you know, I potentially might recommend somebody named Shane Barker that you might have heard of, but you know, there's other great agencies out there as well. I'm not the only one. If you're looking, if you have a little bit of a lesser budget, then what you can do is, is there's software out there that you can go and educate yourself on, you know, on how to find the right influencers. There's, I mean, my ebook when you download it, it kind of goes really what we did our process to get one of our clients, Zoe, from you know half a million to 1.6 million, goes heavy into that process. If you have people that you know, or there's the other side of it that we do is that we also do consulting. So you can say, hey, listen, like I want some guidance, but I don't. You know, I can't afford you guys hourly for 50 hours to do this campaign. So can you guys come in and just kind of advise us? And so we'll jump on a call, a Skype call, whatever that may be. Um, or they can send me an email and I do a, a Loom video, which is a video that kind of explaining stuff. And then that way it's, a, it's not quite as expensive. So it just depends on, once again, do you want the white glove treatment? Are you looking to maybe get educated along the way? Or are you looking to do this thing um, all yourself? All right. Well, Shane, uh Thank you for uh, answering those questions. That was a really great Q&A. Uh, and thanks to everyone for joining our webinar. Uh, we will have one uh, in January, and we hope you come out. It'll be with Joe Griffin, uh, and we'll have registration open for that soon. So just be on the lookout anywhere on our social channels, and we'll send out emails as well. Uh, so again, I'm Zach, and from all of us at Vertical Measures, thanks for attending, and have a great day. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, guys.